you happen to get laid off, yeah. now you have money to, and you're not worrying about how you're going to make your expenses, how you're going to put food in the in the fridge type of a thing. Um, you know, because I know for myself, I'll be honest with you, you know, I w- there's been times in, in my past where I would have negative $5.23 in my bank account mm-hmm. and I didn't get paid for another couple of days. And I just, you know, and I was a single mom with two kids, you know, how was I going to not a lot of food, not much gas, you know, how was I going to make it to work? And I would be stressing out, out about it. And then, I'm, and it's not like I didn't make, it's not like I, did, I didn't have the money. I just, again, my money was telling me where it went rather than me telling where it goes. So you got to put the savings first and you got to put it out there. Um, you know, and then you have your rent, your mortgage, your utilities, your insurance, you know, you got to, you just write, you know, if you don't have Excel, Google sheets, if you don't have a computer, paper and pen, I mean, write it down, yeah. write it down and figure it out. And I'm going to tell you what, when you, and you're going to, you're actually going to use a few days to do this because you're going to start remembering, oh, that's right. I have this expense or, oh, that's right. I didn't think about that. Or, oh, that's right. There's this. And then when you start looking at it all, you're going to be, suddenly you're going to just be like, why am I spending a hundred dollars on facials? <laughs> why am I spending, you know, I don't know. Why are you spending hundred dollars on facials, uh, Krista? Uh, well, I'm not anymore, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or why am I, you know, whatever it may be, you know, I mean, I granted in, in my own, I actually stopped getting my nails done for about six or so months. And then after you six, your, you're doing your nails now. I, I went back to getting my nails done because in a few months back and cause I just realized how much I, it actually made me, there was a, it, it just made me, there, it just brought me like kind of a joy or something there was about it. And kind of a therapy. Yeah, it was, you know? And, and so I went back to getting it because, mm-hmm. because the, because the benefit from it was outweighing the, the cost I noticed. Cause it was actually, it, it actually kind of bummed me out that I stopped getting my nails done, but there's a lot of stuff that I did take out. Like, you know, I, I don't have a car. I take public transportation. I live in the city and I work in the city. So it's very convenient for me, but I chose to live in the city and I chose to make sure I had a job that was close to me and I take public transportation. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I'll tell people, yeah, I don't have a car. I take there. They'll look at me and they'll be like, you don't have a car. Like they're offended that I don't have a car. And I'm like, no, I don't have a car. I have two kids that are under the age of 24, insurance, gas. You start adding that all up. That's almost a thousand dollars a month. Like I, you know, I, I take public transportation when I have to, I use Uber Lyft and that's like, and I think maybe like maybe $300 a month. So I'm, I'm saving myself quite a lot of money. And then I also, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to be a little transparent, a little, you know, personal, but I live in a one bedroom home or not home apartment with my two kids. We make it work and you're a minimalist. I'm a minimalist. Yeah. I mean, I really started looking at myself and that's what we're all going to have to do. It's like, I think in a way it's actually brought my family closer because we have to live closer together. I mean, I won't lie. We definitely have some interesting moments. But I think in general, it's actually brought us closer together. And, and actually, in, the, in this time, I've, I've, I've heard some really amazing things from my kids that I don't know if I would have heard, heard of, uh, you know, otherwise. And um, just about how I'm doing as a mom. And, and uh, you know, it's those moments that make you kind of cry. But uh, so it's, you know, yeah, you got to You just really have to start looking at yourself in, in a lot of these situations. And um, actually, Daniel, you were telling me the other day, because like right now you're going through a refi, but and, and also um, when you were looking to buy a home. Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I think we qualified for about a six hundred thousand dollar loan. And I, I knew I couldn't afford a six hundred thousand dollar loan. <laughs> you know, and then uh this kind of uh, in two thousand eight, you know, seeing my parents kinda of struggle during the recession, I was like I didn't want or me and my wife were both working to pay the mortgage. I rather us just one of us could pay it solely on one income. So if someone lost their job, we could afford it. And I think a lot of people is they don't they don't factor in the full cost, so they just look at the sticker price. When you look at a home, there's you got your insurance, your taxes, with a brand new car, um, the oil changes when you get that Beamer. They're not fifty dollars <laughs> like a Honda, you know, or you're doing <laughs> yourself, you know. There's a lot of maintenance costs, so people don't look at the full value or the full cost of what it, what something is when they purchase it. They just see the sticker price and like, oh, that's what I'm gonna pay. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we have to start. We really need, I think we all need to um, very seriously consider all of that. But, uh, you know, once, once you determine, you know, you're going to determine your, so if you're a business owner, you determine your personal expenses, determine your business expenses. And then that, 
in factoring in your personal expenses in there because you need to know how much you need to take out of the business in order to be able to pay um, your personal expenses. And then that kind of gives you an idea of how much you need to charge because that's how much you're worth. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't inflate it because, you know, but um, and that and that's how much you're going to be worth. So, so that that's kind of, you know, how budgeting can work. And, you know, if you need, if you want more uh, specific information related to you because every person I know is different every business is different you know there's there's an analysis that can be brought in and in ways possibly to um you know one thing I actually wanted to bring up real quick is is for me when I finally actually got into my budgeting I use technology to my advantage I have Apple Pay that's where my where my grocery budget and household goods go and so so it, it and it gets out of my checking account because I know for me if I see it in my checking account I'm going to spend it, so I got to get it out of my checking account. And then I have my investments accounts and and if I and if I need money it, it's going to take me a couple days to go back into my checking account. So then I actually stop and think, well, do I really need this right now? And there's so many times I'm like, nah, it's not worth it. I don't need that. I'm a firm believer if you can't buy five, you can't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's how I live my life. Yeah, say that again. So if you can't buy five, you, you can't, can't buy, buy one. five straight up cash. You cannot afford one. Interesting. So that's how I live my life. Yeah, you can finance everything, but I don't like to finance when I use my card. It's called over over lever- leverage. Yes. Yeah. I make sure to pay it right away. You yeah. Know? Or to take it. You know, what I mean, even if it's you know you got the zero percent APR. Yeah. I try to pay it off as soon as possible. Exactly. And you, like you said, you start over leveraging, and then. I've over-leveraged I've, o- I've overleveraged in the past. I know yeah. about that. Yeah. It's very easy to do it, but I mean, if something falls falls flat, you know, you <laughs> you're going to be scrambling. Yeah, and I think another key thing is to take from this is stop having FOMO. I had never heard the that fe- the fear of missing out. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, but my generation will tell you YOLO. You YOLO. Only, you only, only live, live once. once. Yeah, well, you know what? That, that's <laughs> well, that's great, but That's actually the 80s too, by the way. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that, yeah, that fear of missing out has has definitely, you know, gotten into us and, and I'm just like, you know, it, it, and I'd rather think of like, but what am I, it's not necessarily what am I missing out now, but what am I going to miss out in the future? It's like, I you need to have kind of that thought process too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So like I was saying, you know, Krista does numbers.com or you can reach me. I changed my email address to Krista does numbers at gmail.com. I'm a female. I'm allowed to do that. So, um, yeah, so definitely reach out if you have any questions or if you just need some help, you know, I'm willing to do some, uh, consult and we can work that out. So thank you so much for listening. See you next time. Bye. Bye.